says that everyone, whoever actually, you know, puts through the um, applications on a resume, 84% um, of the employers found a lie or misrepresentation of on the resume itself. And it's, you know, you probably are not doing it, you know, um, meaning that um, it's just lie. I, I just hope that no one does it, but sometimes unknowingly you're probably doing it as well. So that's why, you know, employers have each, like, you know, each tools, there are tools in the place for employers to make sure that they are hiring the right candidate and they are checking whatever you're providing uh, during application stage and resume and interview and whatnot. So what goes on paper, what, what you say, that does matter. There's no going back later on to fix it. Even if you get the job later on, employers have a right to come back and take it away just because you lied on a resume. Maybe you just, um, there are so many examples we're going to go through it later on and it would be crystal clear to you that you got to make sure that you provide the right, right detail um, so it does not come back to you in future. So what do they do? Examples of lies, right? Like, you know, you might not know um, just by putting a date, let's say you work there for one year and you're saying two years, that's a lie, right? And they can verify that. And we can go through it later on how they can verify that even the months. Um, and also dates and tenure as well. Um, even let's say you had held multiple roles. And, um, and if you're not clear on the date, find out but don't put anything that you're not sure about it because it would come back later on and they will ask you and you have no idea, um, you know, how to, how to just, you know, now make it up, right? So have the fact, right fact from day one, there's no going back and you, you don't want to use that. Um, you don't want them to use against um, like you, right? So title of the previous job matters as well. So uh, for newcomers, um, I don't know how many of you guys are watching the newcomers. Um, so what happens is um, there are probably different titles back home. Um, one of the example I want to talk about is let's say you're a sales manager back home, but like uh, it's the same kind of job that you're targeting here and um, you're targeting a sales manager, but there's no title, but you know that you can do the job and maybe the title is sales coach because the title has to match as well. And some people actually put it in there, but be very cautious about picking uh, the title and changing the title. If it's um, if it's 100% match and you know you, you, this is it, but the title is something that it's probably different back home and um, it's different here, then you are allowed to put certain title on it. Provide Providing the fact that your manager is aware of it, that you put that title, if the reference is if the, there is a reference check happening in the background, um, the management should know, your boss should know that you put that title and they're okay with it as well. Make sure you run it by with anyone that you would probably put them on a reference, okay? So responsibilities as well. A lot of um, few folks and a lot of people, they try to brag about it. There's nothing wrong with it, stretching your responsibilities, but there's a blatant lie that you can put it in there. If you've never worked on that particular area and if you've shown that you've worked, then you know what, that's a lie as well. Just um, be very careful on stretching your responsibility, okay? Um, and also, um, many employer, what they want is they want the professional resume. And if you, and I've seen people uh, putting personal, uh, personal references, such as, you know, your colleagues or friends or family members, be very cautious about it. They want what they want. You have to make sure that you follow the protocol and rules um, and they're well aware of it. And if you don't have a reference, professional refer references in Canada, we can go back, um, we can talk about it later on in the next slide, but you got to follow that protocol. And uh, the gap as well, employer could, um, if you make up, you know, some people would have gap in employment. If you make up some things and it's a lie, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. But there are things that you can put it on the resume to cover the gap, but you got to be very, very careful, not create something that you're not doing right now. It has to be relatable and it has to make, you know, make sense as well. 
So I just wanted to let you know that most employer, they don't um, conduct the background check directly um, until they have conditional offer, um, meaning that you pass those uh, screening and you've passed the you know, interview as well. But there are some employers, they would probably start um, asking you for references and we're gonna go through that. Who would that be normally? So the background checks. So what are the background checks? When you look at it, what happens is there are so many things that different people do it differently. So identifying the verification is one of the key, your ID um, and also criminal history, your driving records as well, um, and professional license verification, especially if you're an engineer, if you're on to the regulated industry, employers are allowed to go back and verify that as well, up to the point that they can contact the, uh, the industry. Also your education history as well, they are allowed to ask you for the original as well. Just have those all handy because whatever you put it on a resume you should be able to provide that evidence if it's requested by employers so be very mindful of putting a date graduation date and everything if you're putting it through and um, even if it's expired a lot of people what they do is they expire and they make it look like a current and make sure that you know you are actually honoring uh, you're actually following the protocol when you're providing those certifications because expire certification means nothing right um, so criminal history is check as well um, in Canada, like, you know, um, police report. And if you're one of the rule of thumb is if you have uh, the common name, then um, and your date of birth matches with the other person, you might have to go with the fingerprints as well. And most nonprofit, if you want to work for most nonprofit and government certain sectors, they require the vulnerable check, which is thoroughly that includes everything. If you are a past offender and whatnot, you can Google what's a vulnerable check um, and it will give you um, all those details on it. So the other thing is if you've lived outside of Canada, um, certain like, you know, after a certain month, then you might be required to produce the police report from each of those countries. And it could apply to the newcomers as well. I know that when you come to Canada, you actually are supposed to provide the police report in order to move in, but like have that, if you have the copy of it, just you know, request it and bring it along with you. So that way, if employers are wanting that again, you don't have to go back again and request it, um, have that uh, copy or whatever, if you could from back home as well. And also, um, they would probably, the company could probably reach out directly to the different country, or they might ask you to get it back to them. And it's happened to um, some of the job seeker I work with in top companies like Amazon. They were at, if, they're, if they lived in like, you know, Switzerland before, and if they moved in Canada, like, you know, uh, with the PR, they've asked for those police report from there as well. It happens with a lot of companies. It's a norm. It's not a shocking incident, okay? So the other thing is um, lot of people don't know, but like the driver's license, um, what happens is there's an abstract and driver's license that actually gives you everything away, which is, again, uh, driving under influence is one of the factor employers actually look, at, look for as well. So if you have any record of, um, you know, being um, being on DUI, like that stays in the record. And um, if your job is actually one of those, which is quite related with uh, some kind of driving vehicle of the company, or maybe you're using your own vehicle to actually transport or meeting clients and everything, they have full right to go um, and ask for those details as well. And uh, drug test, uh, um, especially in the healthcare sector, even if you're not doctors or uh, whatever, you're not directly dealing with the patient. If you're working within the healthcare industry, um, they will ask you for vaccination report and um, they will do the drug test and stuff like that too. So just if you have the record already from back home, just bring it with you. And if not, then they might ask you to go get it done as well, okay?
So to avoid the discrimination lawsuit, normally what has been happening now is most employers are hiring a third party for reference checks, so they are not biased and they just get the report and they make the decision based on that as well. So don't be alarmed when the company themselves do not call you, but it's a third party calling you. It's completely normal, but be, make sure that you actually are called by um, the company's rep, right? They're licensed people. So I don't know if you know, um, if you're a newcomer, Canada has uh, the steps um, when you go through the driving driving license, G1, G2, G, you can Google it and find out. And um, employer could, um, although employer cannot ask you, can you drive or not? But at the same time, there are some, um, some jobs that, um, that requires the driver's uh, license and they could actually make a mandate requirement that you need to have full G, which is full G license. And they can they can actually put it as a prerequisite um, before you even apply for a job and if you say yes they would require those um, on the file as well okay and I'm not sure if you know that there are countries um, that when you move uh, from outside you can um, you can go to driver's license office um, and then you can straight exchange it um, go and find out um, but then for that you need some kind of like IDP driver's permit which is valid in Canada as well, check in your country to get one before you arrive. And uh, check if your country qualifies under direct exchange for licenses. Normally you have to be experienced driver, you have to be driving for a couple of years. So this is really huge because I work with a lot of financial, um, you know, I, I come from the banking world and I know so, and I personally personally been involved in these references check as well uh, sometimes. So a lot of people don't know is uh, the newcomers who come in Canada and who want to go to the banking sector, they feel like they're ready to go. But number one pointers, if you want to go into the banking sectors or financial industry, the credit score is one of the mandate everyone requires because you are actually dealing with someone else's money. Even if you're not dealing with the money, if you even if you want to go to operations, anything like that, there has to be sufficient credit history. So um, take a look at it. What are the good, um, very good and uh, fair and poor credit? Um, every bank has their own mandate. Um, some tend to hire excellent um, people only, uh, excellent score only. Some tend to go with the very good and some could go with the fair. But um, every bank has their own policy. And if they hire someone with the bad credit, then that's a legal liabilities for them as well, right? So uh, there are a couple of things that you can do in order to speed up the credit history is, um, so what happens is make sure that, you know, you pay the credit on time, but pay it on the time. And before that, how do you build it? Try to build a relationship with the bank in Canada, top five in Canada, and have the bun bundle product with them, and you would be able to get those first credit card, um, so you can start the credit going. And um, don't be afraid to use a credit card, pay it. Usually, you have a grace period, and keep on using the credit card, because um, some people what they do is they just get the credit and don't actually use it, and that serves no purpose because that's not how you build the credit. So you have to continue using it, pay it on the time after a couple of days let the credit build up so that shows the history and that's how you build the history as well so um, and also the other thing that I've had one scenario was one of the client was declined uh, for uh, during reference check and when I asked like how come like you know do you have a credit uh, history she said she was the authorized individual on her husband's card so that doesn't do anything you cannot be authorized user on the card to build the score you have to have your own separate credit card be mindful of and uh, just being an authorized user it does not build your credit card so you got to make sure you have your own separately it's like your ID your identifications kind of thing right and also if you can't find um, anyone if because you don't have income and sources because you have to qualify for it sometimes so you want to make sure you get some guarantor and guarantors are only uh, supposed to be um, immediate family members blood relative and then you they can be guarantors so that that's how you can start building credit in Canada as well 
And also there are free scores for those of you who want to know what's your credit score is already. If you're in Canada, you can go to borrowall.com and credit karma, and it actually gives you the credit score. It also gives you who is uh, checking your credit um, regularly, you know, stuff like that. So if someone does the soft, um, soft check, that means it, the credit score doesn't go down, but someone does the hard, um, hard score, hard check, uh, the, there's a point that it goes down as well. So you don't want to keep on applying for the credit after like, you know, credit, especially if you're trying to build it, just, <clears throat> just go and then um, just apply for one stick to it. So that way you are, the people can just see how good are you with the history and that's where they're looking at. And then uh, sometimes what happens is if your ID got stolen or you ended up in like, you know, bad credit score because of bad, bad divorce or family issues or health reason, there are some employers, they would probably ask you as well what happened, but most likely they don't do it because you're a risk to them, but um, you could potentially like, you know, talk about it as well. So I highly recommend if they come, if they come back to you with the questions, highly recommend to be transparent and see where do, where do they go from, okay? So consider volunteering in Canada when it comes to reference check because uh, um, few, there are only few employers that are going to contact people from back home, right? Uh, especially for newcomers. It's international. They don't have a time for it. They want to move, um, you know, time is money. They want to move it, move it like, you know, um, right away, right? Especially when there's a conditional offer. Make it very easy for them because um, they, they're not going to go through the hoops just to make sure that, you know, you get hired. It's your responsibility to make sure you make it easy for them. So one of the thing is volunteering in Canada, especially as a Canadian work experience as well, and to use them as a reference as well. And reach out. Um, a lot of people, what they do is they feel like, well, no one's going to, I don't have any people to volunteer, but reach out to smaller uh, business. They might need people like you. They might be able to use your expertise. Reach out to your own ethnic community. If you're from India, if you're from Nepal, if you're from Bangladesh, right? Like, you know, you have like, you know, great organizations there, they are going to be helping new immigrant non-resident uh, people, right? Reach out and see um, if you can somehow help them and use some of those people from the board members as a references as well, because now they know you as well, okay? And always make sure that when you're applying uh, for the job, don't leave it, don't leave it to them because they have no idea you apply for a job and what kind of job you apply for it coach them, you know, those are the strengths that they're looking for on this. And I really want you to highlight that, right? And things like that, just go ahead and highlight that for them. So that way, it makes it really easy um, for them to actually talk about it, even email them in advance, I've applied for this job, you're supposed to, by the way, out of courtesy, ask them anyway, that can I put you in a reference, do not ever put anyone on a reference without asking. And later on, when you know that you put them on a reference, make sure that you email them what was the job make sure you email them out job descriptions and talk about these are the strength and these are my weaknesses I would love for you to talk about it if they ask you and we're going to go through the questions later on how they rate you so nonprofit and government, normally what happens is when you are applying online, they are the one right now still using the old, um, you know, the system, they really want you to put the references, three or four references online. And that's going to be hard for you if you don't actually have a reference already. So um, it's always best idea to have a reference from day one, you have it just in case they ask, they might, they would not call you without asking, but you know, um, you might want to make sure that, you know, you use a right references from day one you never know what happens in the background right and we I recommend having at least three or four because if one person drops out then you at least have like you know other three out there so you don't have to scramble in the last minute so here are a couple of things behind the scene and you probably don't know, do you think that employer just sticks to like, you know, what you give? No, there are people, they actually go overboard and I've seen it um, because it's their reputation line, right? Um, hiring costs are really, really, um, really expensive and they don't want to hire the bad fit. They want to check the fact provided. So they don't have to use the phone number you provided for a company. They can research on their own. They can go and um, go to the switchboard at the company reception area and, and just find out um, about you and about the references they provided. So for example, if your ex you provided the reference for ex-boss, 
they can even find out if the ex-boss actually like, you know, work there and how long and his title and whatnot as well. So be very mindful of providing the references for people who no longer work within that, you know, within that department. Because some people, what they do is they just provide it, but like they put it as um, the past employer. But uh, if you don't find out where your boss is, you have no idea, then you technically lied, right? And you're delaying the process. So make sure you have up-to-date references. Also, um, they can verify licenses and educations, and some employer might ask you to attach credential as they have at the application stage. There are colleges and university. They will say um, they want you to attach those certifications and the uh, diploma or uh, whatever, the degree, while you're applying for it. If you don't do that, your application would be automatically, um, you would be failing the application stage, right? So follow that instructions. And um, by the way, and a lot of people don't think that whatever I do in my personal life, that's none of their business. That's not true. Although there's a law in place that you're protected as a job seeker, but anything that you are posting it publicly um, and it's available to public, they can make a judgment on it and form an opinion about you. So that way, it, you know, they can determine if you're the right fit or not, because, you know, you are going to be their employee and they can totally, totally uh, look into the the reference and see if the if you're the right fit and be make sure you clean your uh social media the stuff that you don't want to see your grandmother maybe take it off or just put it on the friends list only okay so the law in the place, obviously, I'm sure you know, they cannot re uh, deny, employers cannot deny you uh, the job offer, even if it comes in the references, whatever it is based on the racial factor, ethnic background, political opinion and views, you know, history of your health and gender and um, marital status and, uh, you know, anything, who you are. And also one more thing is if you've been convicted and if you're, um, you were pardoned, uh, if you've done something bad, and if you're pardoned, um, they're not allowed to make a judgment on that as well. There's a law in place for that. And all the backgrounds should be reasonable um, to the needs of the job and done with the informed consent. If they want to check the credit history, they have to ask you. They cannot, they cannot sneakingly go and check the credit. They also ask you for SIN number at that time as well. Um, and um, so that way, um, that way they know who you are as well. And also you have to have a valid SIN number, by the way, to work in Canada, a valid SIN number, okay? And then also you need to give consent for police report and any, anything they wanted to ask, you need to make sure you, you say yes to that. So these are the questions that normally they ask and there are a lot of employer, they go through the different kind of questions. So when I get the uh, requests from, for references, uh, for people they worked for me in the past or currently, um, they ask me things like this and it's totally based on the industry and the job role they're applying for. Some people, they just wanna hear yes or no. Some people want detail, but as an employer, they have a, you know, they have a right to say, um, right to say, just stick to yes or no or right to provide the detail as well. And employers are really, really cautious to provide any bad references because um, technically you can come back and sue them later on if it's not the right information. So they, most of the employer, they have stopped providing the references. They only do the fact check now and it has to go through the HR managers don't even provide the references because they don't want to get involved on it right and a lot of people don't even know how to do how do you answer the reference questions so the people in this um, people in the organization's top industry they, they are a specific HR department they only are handling the references so you find out so before you put someone's name on it uh, as a reference you need to find out if they're allowed to even and go and provide the references because they are liable and there's a strict policy for employers not to provide one and stick to the fact. So the some of the example you can see is terms on which the employer's, um, you know, person's em employment ended and why that's a really, 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 really vague questions and people that's, you know, uh, people can give away so much 
without giving you away. Uh, it's like, are you, were you fired kind of thing? Although they can't ask you, but like, you know, there are so many things as an employer, if they really, if you really had a toxic boss, uh, you should not probably put them on a reference. First of all, you should have someone else, uh, right? So please, and then they will talk about um, the, describe the working relationship with an applicant, right? Like, you know, supervisor, client, a peer, and what was the time frame during which you were, like, you know, you were working Working for them, what were the applicant primary responsibilities, right? That's where it comes out. So they would ask you the responsibilities based on what you put it on the resume. So if it's not matching up, there's a red flag for you. And so the would you consider rehiring the person is the big, big one. If you got fired because of bad attitude, whatever it is, employers could potentially say I'm not able to answer or no. And you're screwed, right? So you got to be very, very careful on putting the references or be very um, on that. And things happen, you know, maybe you were, uh, you were on the wrong, uh, wrong job, like, you know, maybe it was a toxic environment, be very transparent, there's no point of hiding why you were you don't work there anymore, right? So own it. So that way, it does not come in the last minute. Um, employer can ask any issues with the attendance and performance, um, and also strength and weaknesses swap, or like, you know, they can go through it and um, if let's say that you are um, you so your employers are uh, not able to answer that some employers what they do is uh, we can't go on a phone it needs to be documented can you send us an email we'll and um, we'll write it employer can actually ask for email references as well. So I've done that for my people when I was really super busy on a phone, I would tell them, can you email me? I'll just send it back to you, right? So it is completely normal um, and um, don't be alarmed with it. And it's more detail, um, just coach your references. That's the best way. And um, one thing that I want you to, I want you to understand is, you know what? Um, if you are getting job right and then later on whatever reason after reference check you're failing it chances are there's something wrong with it you might want it to uh, cross uh, check your previous employer to see what are they saying jump on the phone have someone call in on your behalf and just try to like you know see uh, what are they saying right maybe there's something that you would not know you're blindsided on it right and then there's a process in place that you can follow but again um, there's something wrong with it if you're failing a reference check it could be something uh, like credit score as well find out know what what are the steps involved before and to make sure that you correct that for future So these are some examples that you can see. Uh, this is real things that they use. Um, you know, you, there's a rating system when the HRs, now keep in mind, um, HRs are, HR professionals are trained how to do the reference check. And uh, without that, good company actually, you know, actually goes with the process. There's a process and protocol to follow. And you can see um, what are the things, uh, one of the real example of like, what are the thing, like, you know, uh, they would ask, give, they would gather information so that like, you know, bunch of information to come to the point of if they're right fit or not. So uh, they can talk about the competencies, like, you know, skills and everything. There are so many things so people, organization, partners, and uh, they ask um, all about evidence and they actually record the comments. They're writing everything your employer is saying as well. So it needs to be clearly documented just in case if you go back and sue them, they have a documentation going on. They actually have to put it on the system. So that way it's all documented. Right employers and good employers are very good at protecting themselves. So there are more information provided on this. Um, the government site, you can take a look at it as well. This is straight taken like, you know, from there, the examples and everything. Um, so the other thing is what you can also see is um, over here, you can see, are you aware of any areas that could be developed by the applicant in relationship with the competency? Like, you know, these are all the questions it's rated. Um, and then also they would ask your employer, okay, what are the areas? Can you give, uh, give us an example as well? So it's really, really the good company actually go uh, in a very deep, like, you know, if they really want to hire a good fit, they will go in a detail and references takes, I do references all the time. It takes more than 30 to 45 minutes. And I don't provide references for the people I'm not comfortable. I only provide for a few people only when I know that they're really, really good, a good, um, you know, team worker. 
So where you can find the references. So when you look at it, like, you know, some people might think that it's only current manager. That's not true. Take a look around. And it obviously it depends on the employer's choice as well. What do they ask? So right now your boss, previous manager, your mentors, your, uh, you know, and board members. So if you're part of some board members, if you formed a good relationship, you've done something, those could be used as a references as well. Your colleagues or seniors who worked in the same project, they can talk about those projects. Um, your trainer, um, you know, if you've taken some courses, um, you can add them as a, you know, references as well. Your coach, if you had any coach, you can put there in there too. Community members as well who are part of the organizations, who are on, who have some title, who can validate, you can put them as well. Teacher or professor as well, you can put them as a reference. Um, and your clients, if you are doing side hustle, you have your own business, you want to get back to the market, and if it valids, um, you know, if that that's one of the um, um, known industry, then you can certainly put your client as well as the um, as the reference as well and your partners and vendors as well if you if you had your um, own business and you're dealing with the partners and vendors you can add them as well so there are so many things you can do when it comes to references but um, always ask the employers uh, if they're okay to accept it some employers just say no just a past boss, like you know a few bosses some employers can be okay with it too be very transparent on it so now the other thing is I wanted to talk to you about is if you want free resources, there are so many free resources and teaching do website, you can go and see there's a link hundred more than 100 links for a job link in Canada. If you are landing soon, if you're already landed, there are the link you can download it for free. It's under more when you go on more and then there's um, two uh, right now we plan to put more on it. And also newcomers guide they, it has like in you know, a lot of information that you need in order to settle in Canada or before you come in Canada as well you can go ahead and download it as well it's going to be there for limited time only go ahead and download um uh, it's a pdf format and you can just you know honestly it's a gold nugget for you and um, there are remote jobs there's an industry um who is hiring like in you know, banking to engineering to doctors in engineer like bridging program like you know everything is there including the immigration link as well in there uh, from the right sources um it's provided for you for free in there So, and if you want to actually get in touch with uh, Teach and Do and know, like, you know, about the career um, tips and, like, you know, services, what we do, um, you can also contact us through Contact Us page and uh, free resources right here. And you can follow me at LinkedIn as well if you want to continue um, to get the career tips and guides. And we're all over on social media. And we also have a YouTube channel as well, completely. And it's a mix of um, everything the job interviews and personal branding and whatnot. One of the if you're newcomers right now watching there's one video that went like you know a lot of people we got a feedback from the newcomers it was helpful no Canadian experience and there's five steps to break the barrier like watch those videos uh, and subscribe so that way you continue to actually you know have um, good job search uh, tools and resources uh, before landing in Canada even after landing in Canada I think I'm good Thank you so much, uh, Shweta. We can start taking up questions and I can see that people have already um, uh, put some questions in here. Um, are vulnerable checks and police reports free? Um, and if not, is the employer expected to pay for these? It depends on the employer. So um, I know one time when I applied for nonprofit, I had to pay it. It's not free. Um, I think there is, um, you got to check it. I think it was like I paid a couple of years ago, like $45 or something. Vulnerable was a um, little bit more. Um, it's not free at all. Um, check with the um, check, check with the department, but like, you know, employers normally sometimes um, they do it on their own, but their employers, they would say, go get it for us. Thank you. And how does an employer check if the candidate has worked for a company located in another country? Like, um, do they call them? Do they email them? How does that work? 
Oh, like, you know, they have a choice to email them. They, they can do whatever they want to. They would go there and then find out information. So that's, they don't have to stick with whatever you provide them. If it's a reputed company, they're going to go to the switchboard. It all depends on, um, you know, what kind of employer um, it is. If it's a top company, they have their own people there. Like, you know, for reference track, they have a third party. Um, you know, you don't expect Amazon in US to actually, um, Canada to actually, just call they would have outsourcing party already in that country right so they have their own tools and resources thank you and um you know you spoke about credit checks as well so if credit check de decrease your score each time you check you know what should they do is it is it a big hit that they take on their credit check or so what happens with the credit check, I want it, there's a soft credit check and hard credit check. So when employers are doing the credit check, it's not normally the hard, it's supposed to be soft, but you never know. But when banks are actually opening the account, it's normally, when you open the account, it's normally the hard check. So that's why uh, a lot of newcomer, what they do is they go and apply and the score goes down. And plus like, you know, the other people are thinking like, why are you seeking so much credit when you're new in Canada? So that's why you, it depends on the purpose of why you're opening the credit card if it's mortgages like you know that's a different story but if you build it just start with one but I'm not the credit advisor but there are like you know people get the help from the right people stop listening to the family and friends um, go and get the advice from the financial advisor but at the same time uh, be mindful of it uh, too too much credit card which is open that's a high risk for you because you can go and rack it up anytime be cautious about it and one of the incident that I was um, one of the newcomer actually what they did was they would go apply for a credit card and they did it and then like you know what they got the card and then they will charge the credit card they will pay and then next day they're paying it off and no wonder their credits are not built because you're not even giving chance to build a credit so like you know it takes a couple of days for a credit to like you know uh, be reported so if you can't like you know if you're not showing history your credit scores are not going up so be mindful of it you have a grace period like you know between 20 to 25 days or something so wait for it don't pay the interest but like you know though your thing is to build a credit so use it like you know and there's a guideline how to use it you don't want to max out the credit card either not 80 percent. you should probably use up to 60 percent only so that way you're not living off the credit so so ask do the homework uh, don't max out guys because that actually brings the score down as well there's so many criteria you can google it what not to do when it comes to credit score uh, to make sure that you know you're staying up to like the standard <clears throat> thank you so next question here is about volunteering um if you've been volunteering somewhere for some time um how long can you wait to ask them to be a reference it all depends on the relationship, right? Like, you know, um, if you honestly, if you're doing the right job and um, if you're volunteering, there's always give and take, right? So any organization when you're volunteering, like, again, it depends on their uh, level as well. Are they willing to do that? Is there a policy that they don't allow the volunteering? But like, you know, I know a lot of nonprofit when you volunteer uh, with them, like, you know, they're okay with it, but you have to have that relationship. Now, Coming to my second slide, right? Like, you know, you cannot force someone to be a reference. You gotta be so good at it that people are, can't say no. I mean, like if I had a really good employee who reported to me, I never said no to them. But like, you know, if I felt like I don't wanna be putting my name online, I've said no, I would say, unfortunately, I don't do the references anymore. I pick and choose as well. So you've earned that trust, then you deserve that. But if you feel like you've not done the right work, then the answer is with you. Go and ask and see. Thank you. Um, what happens if your reference is not working at your previous employer anymore? Um, what uh, if they're like, yeah, what if they're working somewhere else? That's fine. Uh, that's fine. As so because the person was your ex boss and you know, the person's moved on, you're fine with it. So they would normally ask, um, you know, previous reference organizations and everything. That's fine. They will ask you at that time, did you report to this person? If he confirms, yes, you're good to go. And they can go even, up, you know, above it. That's when the employer are going to be like, okay, did they really work on to the past company, right? They can go that far too. So be mindful of like, you know, providing the right reference. Thank you. And what if you are an independent consultant with the company? Can you use someone from that company for a referral? 
Absolutely. It depends on the policy again. Like, you know, I'm going back to the policy. Some people are allowed to, some people not. But then there are a lot of people, a um, lot of people, they would say, you know what, I can act as a references under like, you know, under the table, kind of like, you know, personal references. So, um, and they can do that as well. So um, some few folks would do it, um, even though company says like, you know what, you're not personally allowed to give like professional reference, but it's up to you to do the personal reference and they do that as well. Check with the policy and check with the person if they're comfortable. <clears throat> Thank you. And do employers um, inform candidates if they failed reference checks or credit checks? Um, they don't say fail. They would say, unfortunately, we're not able to, right? We've decided to go with somebody else, right? Like, you know, some employer could come back and say, it has happened to me once, <clears throat> not me. But I referred someone uh, within my company, um, uh, within my company, and the person was great, did the interview, good to go hire. And unfortunately, the person actually had a file for bankruptcy and consumer proposal that I had no idea about, right? Um, it's not of my business to ask people, hey, do you have a credit history? How good is your credit history, right? So I figured the person figured it out. And then later on, um, because I was close friend with the hiring manager, Hiring manager said, yeah, he filled the reference check because it, apparently there's a back credit, right? Like, you know, I don't know if, he, and he was never told, but I knew it, right? I knew it. And I actually told him like, this is what it is. If you want to work in the banking industry, you got to build a credit, right? But employers are not going to disclose that information, at least to my understanding. Thank you. And peers, uh, colleagues, can they, like, if they're in the same lateral position, can they give references as well? Absolutely. And again, depends on what employers or your future employer wants, but you can always put them on it. Yeah. If, especially if they, they, you've worked in the same project, uh, you can absolutely go out and do it because they know um, it all depends on the policy, but you can. Does the reference uh, need to know what they did before they started working at that company? Sorry, what was the question again? Like the person that uh, the, the the reference you've given them, do they need to know like your past work experience as well? Or just um, no, what you've just done for that, that just for that role, just for that okay. role. Okay, so long question here. Um, what are your thoughts on responding to a reference request for someone who you don't feel strongly about? So in other words, how best should you respond to reference check on a person who you won't feel comfortable talking positively about um the you know the balls in your court right like if the, yeah. here's the thing um you know um if the person to me it sounds like why are you on even a reference sheet for mm -hmm. that person so the first step is the person didn't inform you uh, then um you have a choice to say unfortunately i don't provide references right you can just stick to that or the person actually you know said i uh, can i put you in a reference and you said yes then now you are responsible for it you should never say yes to the people like and you're not comfortable with it and say unfortunately i don't uh, want to be part of references I don't deal with that right you don't have to say you're not the right fit but you can definitely say like unfortunately I don't do that and that's what I do if I don't want to act as a reference I don't say like you know what well, you're not the right fit I would just say unfortunately I'm not able to and people like I, they've reported to me 10 years back they still come back to me for references for the people they know that they would I would provide them a good references right so it all depends on the relationship and um, some people you would always get it like out of whack it's okay, well, I didn't even know, like, you know, I didn't even know that you had me in a references. That's something you can coach them. Like, you know, buddy, if you want it, just communicate with me, right? Thank you. And how do you get security clearances, like as a newcomer? Security clearances, meaning like, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. If it's a police report, then obviously in Canada, right? Uh, security, and obviously there are so many things. Um, they would, employer actually would give you uh, what they want um, and what kind of security clearances you want. Normally it's an RCMP check police report uh, normally in Canada and there might be something for regulated industry uh, that they would actually tell you where to go and where to get it from. Thank you. And would volunteer uh, references count as professional references? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you don't have nobody like, you know, what else you're supposed to do. So you need to have a references. References is something that guys like, you know, someone can vouch on you. Someone knows your work ethic and you've done the good job. That's all it is. And people have requirement, follow that requirement, but everything counts as a references uh, for you. 
And do banks allow candidates to explain why they had bad credit or a criminal record? Absolutely. So um, there are bank, um, you know, underwriter, what happens is I work in the banking industry on loan and mortgages and like, you know, I've, the loans and stuff. When, uh, when we, when my staff used to decline people like underwriter would uh, go back and say missing information before declining it, declining the application, it would be put back on the different queue if they want to. And they would say, okay, we see something late payments around this area, or we see something happen. There's a collections, like, you know, what happen um you know at, it depends on the bank but like they definitely try to work with you um and if you have a good story and like you can provide the evidence and sometimes people even keep uh if your identity was um you know there was like you know identity theft anything like that and if you have police report from back in those days they might ask you for evidence as well right so be mindful of there's evidence um that you could put you know, provide um, if, if like, you know, you're willing to work with them. Yeah, bank could ask and it depends on the policy of the bank. And where do you put your employer references? Like, do you put them on your resume? Like, how does, where does that go? It doesn't know. I'm so glad that whoever asked that question in Canada, you don't put the references on before you apply. Um, I see still the old style of references available and requests. Please remove that from resume. They don't need it unless some employer, what they do is when you, again, some of the government, when you go online, they would want your supervisor name and title and whatnot, right? Like, you know, beforehand, you've got to put it in there. Um, but, um, and some employer, what they do is come with the references at the time time of interview and you can bring it and don't give it to them unless they ask. Um, that's it. So reference process normally um, with the legality is you should be only asking uh, for reference to check when you know the person is a right fit. And now that's an extra step. It only should happen when you have extended the offer and say like, you know, it's pending on your references. That's the policy in the market right now. But there are some employers, they actually have a different practice. Uh, before extending the offer, they do the reference check as well, which has happened with my client. Yeah. Um, thank you. And what if you had issues with your only employer in Canada? Like, what do you do? Do you use that employer as a reference? What Absolutely. Would so I would, uh, I would rephrase it differently. So I would not say you had a bad relationship. Um, you know, some of the client who got fired, um, I coach them to actually tell them, okay, well, my employer might not, my boss might not be able to provide you the reference because they might have a policy. How about I give you the HR number and you can confirm the title and the date of employment and um, they would be able to do that because the employer can't say no to that. It's a fact check, right? And you can, you can actually tell them, you know, they might not give you the references, but here's the HR number. You can go and check it out. So that's fine. You don't have to go into the detail. Thank you. And can you volunteer from outside of Canada? Like uh, depends on the uh, country. Like normally, no, I would say no. But again, depends on uh, the, you know, the organization, would they allow you to? It all depends on the employer's um, choice. And um can you submit a reference letter from the previous employer? Instead um, it of depends. It depends okay. um, if the employers are um, the reference letter. So there's a way to do it. There's uh, it's your personal branding, right? Like if you um, I'm, I'm jumping into the different thing, but like, you know, sometime what you could do is uh, you can use that reference letter and put take out bits and pieces from it. And if you have LinkedIn, you can put it on the about me sections. This is what my ex employer thinks about me, right? There's a way to do it as well. That's your personal branding and you can put it on the cover letter. You can even in fact, put it on the resume as well as a code. There's so many things. Um, I teach people how do you actually uh, you know get those and put it sprinkle it around and you know so people know who you are um thank you so uh here a point is if it was a lie to a reference a previous manager who left the company um can you explain that again you said something about lying to a reference 
of a previous manager who left the com company? Yeah, so some people, what they don't understand is like, you know, when they say previous employer, like, you know, recent previous employer, they put like, you know, they put uh, your manager as a pre, you know, that manager, previous employer in there, but like, you know, maybe he was not your previous employer, maybe the person was, maybe the person was, um, you know, working there, but the person is no longer working there, whatever it is, right? So make sure you find out what the person is, person has a same title that you're saying too. Some people, what they do is just because they're working in the same company, you might not be reporting to that manager, let's say one of the example. So previous boss, yeah, but then just because that person actually worked with you in the same project, but he was not your direct report, you never reported to him, he's not your previous boss. Right. And that could see like, you know, when they can verify an HR, if this person was the manager within this department, that comes out as a lie because you provided someone you never reported and you created them as a boss. Unless you worked with them on a project, be very specific about it. Thank you. And how far back do you check employment, like five years, 10 years? any time um normally it's a previous company uh, previous recent, uh, whatever you yeah. provide yeah most recent one and it all depends on the employers can you have more than one reference from the same company Absolutely. I've done that. So it depends. I've done, um, I've had a CFO, um, you know, I personally, when I was a job seeker, after I got laid off, I had CFO, I had the VP of the company, I had my, um, you know, director who I reported to as well, three of them, good references. So they all vouch for me, right? You can definitely do that. Yeah. But you have to have one boss that you reported to, but then the senior, more senior is better as well. Right. So um, totally up to you. Can you, uh, can a coach uh, be counted as a, as a uh, reference? Absolutely. So there's a coach you like, you know, you work with it, whatever it is, and absolutely you can uh, put them as a references. Yeah. And uh, we are actually at the end of the time. I'll take one more question here. Um, okay. Sorry, I don't get that one. Just taking a question that hasn't been asked already. Um, what are the details required to be provided for employer reference? Like what, what would they ask for? I just went on this uh, slide, uh, go back and uh, maybe you join a little bit later, but there are so many questions like your strengths, mm -hmm. weaknesses, what were you good at, performance, attendance issues, uh, you know, are you coachable, um, are you a team worker, did you get along with the team, did you uh, fail any deadline, honestly, to be honest, if I were to go back, it would be the same kind of interview questions that you are asked, that's it. One question that I wanted to, I think there's one question um, that uh, came along, I wanted to talk to you about it is, you know how you said like you know how like you know um how can they check references uh, references without actually even verifying it just so you guys know i don't know if you know but on the credit um you know bureau transunion equifax when you go in there it actually tells you the company that you're working with it and the date and title as well just so you know that's how they verify and match as well just so you know they don't even have to call the employer if they pull the credit on you they can see everything the dates and everything there and your title your company in Canada and US as well, because we share the same credit. TransUnion and Equifax in US and Canada are the same, and they can even verify it if you're working there, you've moved to Canada, you can do that. And by the way, um, if you don't have a credit in Canada and you actually move from US, you can use the social security number to apply and they will manually underwrite your file as well. That's a tip for you if you want to build a, build a score in Canada. Thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to add? Before no, not at all. Um, I don't know. I would love to get your feedback. I have open messages on LinkedIn and, and I would love to hear from you what I can do differently next time. And if there's any feedback that what kind of topic I can bring for you, especially if you're newcomers in Canada, you've landed in Canada or people who are watching me um, as a job seeker, be sure to reach out, um, follow my content and I have open messages. And if you're in Canada, I would love to hear from you and see how I can help you to bounce back in Canada. Okay. Thank you so much.